Hi, Brent Brehan, technical field trainer here at HTP. Um, today I'm here to show you a little bit about combustion and startup on some appliances. Um, so before we get going on the combustion testing and uh, inlet and outlet gas pressures, I'd um, just like to go over a few things that we are going to need to do this properly, of course. So the first thing we're going to need is a, a, you know, a unit to work on, and more importantly, a place to dump the heat. We are going to have to run this for maybe 10, 15 minutes um, to perform all the tests, so we want to make sure that we have the ability to get rid of the heat. So that being said, the other things we're going to need, we're going to use manometers to do inlet and outlet gas pressure tests. Um, you do not necessarily need to have you know, two manometers, um, just very helpful because we're going to have one on the inlet side, one on the outlet side. Um, if you do not have two manometers, of course, we can use one. And we can transition over to the outlet side when needed. Um, the other important thing we're going to need is a, a recently calibrated, you know, good working combustion analyzer. A combustion analyzer is going to be able to get all this information that we're looking for. Um, and with that, if you have a printer, uh, either attached to it or separate, is fine. Um, but you would like to be able to print out the information to leave to the c customer. The other thing that we're going to need is the information as to what co sort of combustion we're looking for. Um, so you definitely need to know which gas we're dealing with, either propane or natural. And then I have printed out um, just a layout of the gas valve so you can get an idea uh, of where all the taps are and what we're going to be adjusting. And of course, the expected combustion levels for the different gases. The other thing that we're going to need to do this um, are a couple of small hand tools. We're going to need a, a flat screwdriver so that we can access the ports on the gas side. And then you're going to need a four millimeter Allen key to make the adjustments correctly. So before we get going on the combustion testing, um, the more importantly, we have to have the analyzer going uh, and ready to go. So we're going to get going with that process now. You also need a place to put the analyzer into. Um, so these particular appliances that we're going to show you right now has a test tap on the top of it. So it's already drilled. If we don't have a tap already installed, we would just simply go 12 inches up a breech, drill a hole, and we can seal that up after we're done to perform the tests. So before we get started, we need to get the analyzer on and get it ready to go. So it's going to take probably 60 to 90 seconds for a warm-up period and a purge cycle. Um, then we're going to get it all plugged in. What you don't want to do is have this analyzer inside the exhaust before you're ready to do your testing. So you want to make sure this comes on, everything's purged, and get everything connected and then we're going to get set up to go. It's very important when you're doing your inlet gas pressure tap that we have the gas supply off because we are going to open a port. It's going to bring raw gas into the space. So before we all do that, we just make sure that the gas is off. So while this counts down, I'm going to assure that my gas supply is off as it is down here. And then I'm going to get my manometer set up on the inlet side pressure tap. Get some of this stuff out of the way. So. On this gas valve, I um, have a very simple layout for it. So first thing we have is an inlet gas pressure tap right here. And the second thing we have is our outlet pressure tap. Of course, the easiest way to verify is follow your gas through the machine and into the gas valve, and that will typically be your inlet gas pressure tap. Again, on the outlet side, we're going to put a manometer so we can measure the outlet side pressure, um, which on all these valves, they're negative regulated gas valves, so you're going to see a negative gas pressure on the outlet side of it. Um, and we are also going to look at low, low fire combustion and high fire combustion. So this is a single orifice gas valve. So we use a throttle screw on some particular valves. This one only has a manifold pressure adjustment or an offset adjustment. We use an orifice to do our maximum. So there's no need to adjust a variable orifice within the valve. So again, they're single orifice valves. So right now, I have the analyzer ready to go. It's on, it's purged, so I can get it hooked up. I can get my connections into it. So it takes a few seconds to get that going. Get these plugged into their appropriate connections. Now you're just about ready to sample. So as I mentioned, we're going to get our inlet gas manometer on our inlet side pipe. So it just takes a few turns to access this port. It's basically a needle valve behind there. So after we have access to the port, make sure the manometer is on. And then we're going to get set up on the inlet side of the gas valve. Once we have that set on there, we can go ahead and turn our gas on. And that's going to give us what we call a static gas pressure. So right here, we have 7.9 inches of natural gas available. We are using natural gas for this 
particular test. So those are the numbers that we're going to be looking for. So again, our static pressure is 7.9 inches. I'm also going to get my manometer set up on the outlet pressure tap. So when I get it into low fire, I'll be able to read that pressure as well. Get this put on there. Hopefully this hanging here. Zero this out. So again, um, if you have a machine that has a test port installed for you, you're good. If not, we'll just get one drilled in there and get that set up. Um, this is an adapter. This limits the air that the machine can pull in. So you want to make sure you have some sort of adapter inside this test port. This is going to allow our analyzer to get uh, the most accurate reading. Um, it's real important that you do not fire the unit with the analyzer installed. So again, you're going to let it purge, let it get ready. Um, you want to ensure that your analyzer is on the right gas that you're going to be sampling. So I'll go ahead and just check that right here. So on this particular unit, uh, it has a gas check on it. So we'll take a look at that. Scroll down, fuel, natural gas. So I'm all set up and ready to go. Okay, you've got everything set up here, and I'm about ready to perform the tests um, that I'm going to do today. So again, I've um, got my manometer on the inlet side. i got a manometer on the outlet side. i got my analyzer cleared out, ready to go. Um, but before we get the analyzer inserted into the test port, we want to make sure that we establish a combustion or a flame um, and let it stabilize and then drop it into our, you know, speed that we're going to test at. So um, for this particular test, we're going to go into low fire first, take a look at low fire, make the appropriate adjustments if necessary, um, and then move it up into high fire and just make sure everything falls, you know, again into play. So before we get going like that, just to like to take a look to make sure that I know what I'm looking for for levels, of course. So um, gas supply range should be anywhere between 3.5 to 14 inches of uh, water column um, with no more than a half inch pressure drop uh, upon ignition. On the outlet side, depending on the gas type that you're using, it, but they're negative regulated gas valves, so you're going to be in the negative uh, 0.01 and sometimes a little bit further depending on the gas. Um, but what we're more concerned about, of course, is the combustion. So we're going to take a good look at the combustion, see where we are and set it up for that, and just sort of note the gas pressures. The other thing that we're going to do on the startup is take a look at our static and dynamic pressures. So static is sitting here. So right here we have 7.5 inches of, of gas pressure. So I'm going to establish a call or give it a demand um, to initiate the call. Once I have the demand on it and it lights, I can put it into service mode. So on these particular models, we're going to use these series of dip switches to control uh, the test mode or um, low and high fire combustion testing. So like I said, we're going to start in low and go to high. So the first thing I want to do is establish a demand. So for this, I have a, a thermostat demand. So it's going to initiate a call. So I have 7.3 inches or 7.4 inches of gas pressure. After the gas valve opens, we're dropping down to about 7.3. So that's definitely within my limits. So we've established a flame. We have combustion. We're going to grab a little screwdriver here. It's just easier and get to this dip switch. Um, on this particular board, it's number 7. We're going to put 7 to on. And that's going to bring the control and the fan speed down into low fire for me. So once we have it down into low fire, I'm just going to take a look and see where I need to be for combustion. Um, so on CO parts per million, I'm looking to be under 175. And then on my CO or my CO2 range, sorry, the percentage will be 8 to 9% here in low fire. When we move it up to high fire, our parts per million range hasn't changed a whole lot. We still want to be under 175. Um, but our CO2 range has changed just a bit, 8.5 to 10. So the first thing I want to do um, is see where I'm at in low fire combustion-wise. So now that I have the combustion on established, I have a flame. It's stable. I have my analyzer on and cleared out and ready to go. I can get this set up into the test port. And I can begin the sampling process. Um, so again, depending on the meter that you'd be using, um, you know, this takes a few seconds for the analyzer to pull the gas, sample it, um, and get you the information here on the screen. So um, I can see some changes. Things are moving up, moving down. So we're going to let this thing stabilize a little bit and see where we need to make the adjustments at. So again, this process takes um, you know, a few minutes to do, and sometimes can take up to 20, 25 minutes. So you definitely need a little bit of patience while doing this. Um, and of course, a good place to be able to you know, get rid of the, the heat while we're doing this procedure. Um, so right now, I can see the CO2 is slowly starting to climb. Um, it's hitting about 5% uh, or so. It's definitely a little bit lean. Um, so when we make the adjustments, you're going to need to have a 2 millimeter Allen key 
to make the adjustment on this valve. This is a single orifice valve, so it has no throttle or internal throttle adjustment. High fire is done with a gas orifice, whether it's propane or natural. So we're going to be um, focused on the low side or the manifold pressure or offset. So um, on this particular valve, uh, the offset adjustment or the adjustment that we're going to use is right here. So um, what you're seeing here is a cap. So um, we're going to get this cap out of our way. And again, it's still the same four, mi four millimeter cap. Um, just sort of puts the adjustment away for you. So what I can see here is on my CO2, uh, we're sitting at about 5.2%, which of course is very low, and my CO is rising. So um, what this is telling me is that we're having a real hard time burning all the fuel off of there. Um, the outlet pressure is definitely a little bit too far off. So we can see it's real far negative here, so it's very lean. So I'm going to slowly start to go a little bit clockwise on this valve and add a little fuel and see if I can bring that CO2 number up and in the process bring my CO2 down. So I'm just going to give it maybe a, a quarter of a turn at a time. And again, depending on the analyzer that you're using, you want to be able to give this time to sample it and get you the right information. Um, you can also take a good look at this manometer. You can see we've come from uh, negative 1 and we're starting to slowly climb back down closer to that negative 0.01 to you know, oh, uh, 0.015, something like that is where we want to be on this. Again, um, depending on the gas that we're using. So I'm going to pay particular close attention to the CO2 range on here and I'm going to start to slowly bring this up. So again, as I mentioned in low fire, uh, we want to be between, you know, eight and nine and a half percent. So we typically try not to stay on the real lean side or the eight percent, and we want to stay away from maybe the nine and a half side. So find a comfortable spot somewhere in the middle. Um, so somewhere around 8.8, 8.9 would do me okay. But again, that's the range that you're allowed. So as you can see, we're starting to bring this CO2 value up. Our O2 is coming down, and then we have our CO coming down as well, uh, as I mentioned really slow adjustments and give this thing time to get you the information that you're looking for. Um, so we're going to give it another slight turn and see if we can continue to bring our manifold pressure, our outlet pressure down, bring our CO2 up, and of course bring our CO down. It's um, falling really quickly here, so we're getting well within our limits a as I speak here. So on the CO2 side, we're hitting close to 7%. <coughs> so we're going to give this no, again, we're going to give it maybe 10 to 15 seconds in between. Uh, you can watch these numbers change, and as they go up, you want to make sure that they stabilize. You know, one of the caveats to that is if you go too far, then you may have to come back, and it could be a little bit of challenging. So, again, make sure you have a nice heat dump zone so you can leave this guy on and let it run um, and give yourself a little time to get the right adjustments. So right now we're approaching 8%. So, again, we want to be between 8 and 9.5%. And um, I mentioned that we want to be somewhere in the middle there, uh, if you can. So, um, again, 7.9, 7.8. So it seems to be sort of stabilized. So I'm just going to give it another maybe a quarter of a turn. And I'm going to keep an eye on that CO2 number. I'm also keeping an eye on my manifold pressure. It's coming down as well. Uh, and I'm also looking at my inlet gas pressure range, just, of course, to assure that it is still within the range. So um, this is one of the helpful features of having two manometers on there. You can watch both of these things at the same time. So after that small adjustment, we're just approaching the 8 or the minimum side of where we want to be. Our CO, our parts per million, is well below the 175 that we're looking for. So we're okay there. And you can see we're starting to come up. We're at 8.3, 8.4, 8.5. So, you know, I said I wanted to be a little somewhere in the middle. So at this point, you're pretty close. Uh, 8.7, I think, is the number that I'm looking for. You know, so I'm going to maybe watch it, just give it another minute or two to make sure that this is gets to where I want it. Um, so I still have great CO. I'm down in the 66 parts per million. I'm sitting here about 8.9. So I would be okay with that. Um, that's definitely right there somewhere in the middle. Uh, you want to give yourself, of course, room, depending on the climate change and things like that, for this combustion. Um, so that seems to be a pretty good setup in low fire, 8.99. We're at 60 parts per million up there the on the CO side. Uh, you can see we're running pretty efficient, 99.1% on the efficiency side. So once I have established my low fire, and I'm pretty good with that, I got my manometer pressure in 0 0.02, uh, somewhere definitely within the range that I'm looking for. I'm going to take dip switch number 7. I'm going to put that bag off, and then I'm going to put number 6 on. Number six allows this machine to go to high fire. So I mentioned we do two tests. We do one in low fire, and we do one in high fire. So all we're going to do in high fire 
This is to assure that our combustion stays very stable from low to the high range. So again, we use a um, dedicated orifice for high fire or a maximum firing, if you will, on these guys, whether it's propane or natural. So looking at my chart and high fire, I still want to keep my parts per million under 175 and a very similar range of CO2. What you're probably going to see is the CO2 go up a bit, and ultimately that's what you'd like to see. So uh, as you can tell, I'm starting to get the CO up a little bit more, 60, uh, but my CO2 is up to about 9.3 or 9.4 and, and very stable. I would not be too concerned if the parts per million doesn't move a whole lot. They've, run, they've burned very clean, so it's not unusual to see the parts per million all throughout its modulation rate well below 100 parts per million. So again, I'm just going to give it a few minutes to make sure that it's giving me the information that I'm looking for. So I have CO2% at 9.5. I have CO at 64. I got great oxygen at 4%. My efficiency is 98.8%. And I can take a look at my gas pressure range at 7.4 inches, which is well within the range um, of our gas supply limits. Um, outlet pressure, we don't look at too much in high fire. Um, but again, it'll just give you some information on the gauge. So once I have this information, and I'm, I'm pretty well set with the adjustments that I've made, uh, I'm going to print this off. So again, um, we happen to use an analyzer that has a printer built in. So all I have to simply do is hit this printer button, hit OK, and it's going to leave print out a copy for you. There are some, of course, that use an infrared printer. Um, but either way, you'll be able to sign this, date it, um, and you have you know e exact um, data for what this machine was performing at when it was installed. Um, and it's very helpful as you move forward. Certainly, if something goes wrong down the road, we have something to look back for. So this guy just prints this off for me. And then I have a great record of what I'm seeing here. So once you're done with that portion of it, get your analyzer back where it was. Um, and at this time, I'm just going to take and put me back into normal firing rate and put it back in low fire and just assure that everything from high to low comes back down to where I'd like. Um, once you have this testing performed, you have all your documentation, you have everything um, that you're looking for, everything set where you'd like it, it's very important to remember to take the dip switches and put them back to their normal position. Um, they won't undip switch themselves, so it's possible it could be stuck in either low or high fire. Um, and either one of those may get you a service call if they're not put back on. So again, it's just important to remember, just give it back to the normal dip switch position. If you're not sure, right on the side of the control board, um, there's a nice little chart that'll let you know where those switches should be and, you know, of course, the normal position for them. Um, so brought it back down into low fire. I can see everything starting to come back down where I was, you know, originally had set it to. So at this time, uh, I believe that this test is done. Very happy with it. I do hope that helps.